Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to uh, our concluding study on chapter 20 of the Gospel of St. John. This is Easter Thursday. The Gospel text is the Gospel of St. John, chapter 20, verses 24 through 31. Before uh, proceeding, I would like to say that this is a production of the Anglican Orthodox Communion worldwide. Uh, and my name is Jerry Ogles. I am a minister in that church. So let us read the text together. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands. Reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And, and Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, and yet have believed. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. End of reading of the Gospel text. Now let us look at uh, the verses individually and study them individually, beginning at the 24th verse. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus first came. Now, you recall that Jesus appeared in the room Sunday evening and said, Peace be unto you. And then he showed them the nail prints in his hands and the sword wound in his side, and they believed. Now, here is Thomas. He gets sometimes a bad rap because he wants to see the same thing that they told him, perhaps, that they had seen the nail prints and the sword wound in his side. So Thomas is a realist, and he wants to see uh, the direct evidence. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. Verse 26 says, And after eight days again his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you, exactly the same appearance as before. Then saith he unto Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. Now I would like to point out that the Bible doesn't say that Thomas actually had to feel the nail prints and thrust his hand into the, his side. Uh, it seems to me that probably he didn't, that he believed simply based upon what he saw uh, in the person of Jesus and personally witnessing that those nail prints were there and the sword wound was there. Then in verse 28, and Thomas answered and said unto him, my Lord and my God. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, yet have believed. There's a double-edged meaning here. The people uh, who lived after Abraham, to whom the promise was made of a coming Redeemer, those who believed the promise of Abraham were true Israel, and they believed not having seen, and they believed unto salvation. And now we, in in the aftermath of all of these events that occurred on, on Easter Sunday, we believe because we have faith in the gospel message, and we also have the historical evidence 
to show us that Christ did rise from the dead. And so, blessed are those who have believed and not seen. Now, <clears throat> these last two verses have always intrigued me of John. I'm going to read them, and then we will discuss them also. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. There are many things that Jesus did that are not recorded in the gospel that God did not find it necessary to record every detail of, of the activities of Jesus, but there were many. But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that you believing might have life through his name. The fourth gospel was written for one concrete purpose. Its motive was to persuade men that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing they may have life in his name. It is not an annal or an essay. It is not a treatise or a dissertation. It is more of a spiritualized memoir. The heart of the human author has been suffused with the glory of the only begotten from the Father. The Johannine Gospel is more than a biography. However, because it is built about a controlling purpose, the sacred author desires men to believe and to have life. He exhibits Jesus Christ, the Son of God, in the glory of his humiliation and in all the triumphs of his atoning death. Above all, the mortal echoes that rise from the pages of the book as Christ moves in the midst of men is the entreating, loving, apostolic word, believe and have life. I've read and pondered the pages of that inspired book. Praise God, the more I read and ponder, the more deeply I believe. I have life today in his name. I hope you do too, my friends. God bless you, and I hope you enjoy your continuing Easter week and hope to see you again tomorrow evening. God bless and goodbye.